introduce yourselves, and if, if you would like to make any kind of opening statement, please feel free to so to do. Okay, first, <coughs> um, well, I'm, I'm Councillor Christopher Arnold, I'm Deputy Leader at Colchester. Um, I've had, when Colchester uh, Highways Agency, um, I held the, uh, that portfolio for some years, and, and uh, I think largely on account of having worked for the Department of Transport when it was at 2 Marshall Street. Um, that makes in, in, two of us. In, 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 in the 1970s, when I was involved in quite a lot of uh, um, urban transportation modelling with the traffic advisory unit, uh, I seem to have specialised rather in highway issues while I've been a councillor. Excellent. I think it gave me a lingo with which I could speak to highway engineers, which my colleagues tended to lack, so it was quite useful. Um, I've lived in Colchester now, on, on this occasion, although I, I was in my youth there as well, uh, for 26 years on Village, which is very close to the A12 at Hawksley. And in order to drive home from Colchester Town Centre, I pass under the A12. Uh, so I, I often see the status, a little snapshot of what traffic is doing. And it's, it's very apparent that when one sees the traffic not moving on that bridge under which I mm. pass so frequently, um, there is a knock-on effect in Colchester Town Centre. Now, Colchester has something that was the original bypass for the town, which is now sort of skirts the inner core, if you like, parallel with the railway track. It was once the A12. Uh, you get a local announcement on local radio uh, <coughs> you know, that there is a problem on the Colchester Northern bypass. Traffic floods through on that one alternative route, and the town is pretty much certainly in, in gridlock. And I've seen this, and, and, and that is literally what it is, because it's a, it's a Roman town. I mean, the, the streets that are still open traffic are on the grid and the grid locks. And I've seen this so many times over the years that if you get a struggle out of the town, you've seen the town lock very frequently. Um, it's on, you, you, you then eventually get to that A12 bridge and find traffic is, is, is not moving one way or the other. Um, it's, it's a very common occurrence. Now, that's, that's if you like, the personal experience. Uh, we, well, I also have because I deal mm -hmm. a lot, I've been a councillor for 13 years, I, I speak to it, you know, sort of employers and other bodies in the town, the university. And, and the A12 has a reputation. Um, it's one of the things we deal with by being humorous about it, but actually you, you travel to Colchester and, and you, you risk the start of any meeting being delayed indefinitely because of incidents on the A12. And if you're actually talking about the people if that <coughs> is the knowledge of the people who are trying to trigger inward investment, employment investment into Colchester, mm -hmm. then it, <coughs> one of the major drawbacks for those potential employers uh, is actually the linkage which depends upon this one very old trunk road. Uh, I think it's 1970, the early 70s, I think that particular mm -hmm. section was provided, but I can go back 40 odd years with the A12, so I can remember most of it being built. And, and that is particularly important <coughs> to Colchester because I heard you looking, and, and, and no disrespect, disrespect to my neighbours here, um, I think Colchester is now the fourth largest district in England in terms of its population. Is that, is that the statistic when, when our, um, which some of us find actually quite frightening that we should have got there for 30 years when we've been expanding at something like 750, 850 dwellings a year, we're now up to 1150. You've also got a requirement to produce 14,500 new jobs by 2021. And that is a battle when your sole trunk road, the road that links you to the M25, or in the other direction, the road that links you to the A14, has got the sort of reputation that the A12 has got. Mm. And, and, and it is, I mean, I speak as somebody who was just a couple of months ago spent three and three quarter hours sitting on the Kilburn bypass going absolutely nowhere because one accident, and that, that is a very old standard of piece of road, so the carriageways are narrow, there's no sort of pseudo half shoulder to it, you get an accident there, three and three quarter hours, you know, just literally not moved, uh, while the emergency services sorted it out. So, <coughs> although this is anecdotal stuff, it's very difficult to be, sort of produce evidence, and, and uh, my authority is going to have a stab at that before your closing date, but um, I think Welcome. that, for an open statement, I hope will Thank you. Um, I'm Graham Butland. I'm leader of Braintree District Council. 
Can I begin by just thanking you, Sir David, for agreeing to see me later in the day. I'm That's fine. one of these councillors who does have a reputable day job. Um, <laughs> There's a, a nasty job. implication. <laughs> 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 uh, it, is a, it is a day. I live at, uh, at Braintree. Um, I work uh, at Milton, just off the A14 Cambridge. Yes. So I use the A120 westwards to the M11 each day. And I also am required to go to Ipswich, so I use the A14. And of course I come back from the A from Ipswich along the A12 and the A120. Um, so I'm hoping that I come from at this from a perhaps not too parochial aspect. Um, what I would say is, um, clearly we've got limited time. We will be submitting a, a, a written application Please. Um, to you. Um, but I think from the point of view of Braintree itself, we have about 10 miles of the A12 that passes through our southern uh, part of our uh, district uh, and perhaps has some of the um, most difficult junctions uh, that you were referring mm, to yeah. earlier yeah. in terms of Hatfield, Peveril, uh, Whittam, um, and Riven Hall, and then Kelverton and Fury. Mm. Um, and uh, we work very closely as local mm. authorities, uh, Colchester and, and Braintree, uh, and clearly there are, and, I, and both uh, local authorities, I think it is fair to say, um, are prepared to accept the challenge of um, increased housing uh, in, in our areas. We've not turned our back on it. Um, but it needs to be sustainable and it needs to have the infrastructure to go with it. Um, and there are tensions between the, two, uh, between the two of us in that Colchester is looking to expand at Tiptree uh, and around that area, and that clearly is an area where there is no access on the A12, and that throws traffic through Kelverdon and Fearing to, to come down. Mm. In our own uh, situation, the town of Whitton, which uh, is ideally placed um, mm. for additional employment, etc. The, the lack of a, an access at the site by really inhibits uh, economic development uh, <coughs> at, at that area. So um, inadequate junctions, uh, I think clearly that. A recognition there that you can't look at the A12 in isolation. One has to look at this as an integrated uh, uh, approach. Um, and rather like those toys that one had as a child trying to get all those pieces in the right order to make the picture, when you move something, um, there is a, an adverse effect elsewhere. So one of the two, two particular areas from, from Braintree District um, is that the A12 and the A120, in a way, are inextricably linked. Yeah. Um, bearing in mind that Braintree, um, and my colleagues from Colchester, sits at the heart of, of North Essex, midway between the Greater Haven Gateway and the M11 Stansted. So it is a, it is a key route. Um, and one of the things from the government's response to the regional spatial strategy is the concentration on roads running north-south out of London, but actually didn't come round to the A12 and the east-west routes. And I think that's something which uh, we as a district uh, particularly uh, have a point on. The other is the develop, so the A120 is, is, is very important. Uh, and also the second is the improvement of rail. Um, I heard Simon Burns talk, and I'm sure you heard from Chelmsford about uh, a, a new halt. Yep. I think one has to look at the potential impact that that will have in increasing traffic um, from Braintree. Um, Braintree at the moment that, has that, a rail link. Is that the Boreham one you're talking about? Yes, at yes. Boreham Interchange. That would, I think, encourage more people to use their cars from Braintree to go down to get onto the main line there. When, as a district, we are particularly keen, and we've been fighting for a number of years, to improve the Braintree to Whittam mm. link, which is a single file at the moment. Mm. Because um, people do travel into Chelmsford to get the train. They're dissuaded from doing that at the moment to a certain extent because of the difficulties of getting into Chelmsford. If you present something on the outskirts of Chelmsford, down the Great Lees Bypass, down any proposed northeast boundary, you will just increase road traffic. Um, and I think eventually the impact on the, on the Braintree to Whittam line actually uh, would be quite disastrous. And, mm -hmm. uh, if one could improve rail traffic from Braintree by uh, including a loop, which is, I'm sure you will, from your reading now, has, has been around for many years, um, that would actually encourage people 